Good morning, family, friends, believers, and unbelievers alike. It's Super, Super Sunday. Sunday. And we're grateful once again to bring the Lord's message on the week of August 13, 2023. And the title of our lesson this week is A Story of Forgiveness. It's come from Luke chapter 15, 11 verse through 24 verse. And my name is Lorraine, by the way, it's Asia. So we're going to say a quick prayer. We're going to, um, then we're going to jump into this lesson. Our Father and our God, we thank you for another day. We ask, Father God, that your lesson on today, Father God, would reach a heart that needs it, Lord. <laughs> reach a um, family member, Father God, individual that need, Father God, forgiveness from another um, person, Lord God, or someone that need forgiveness from you, God. I pray that you penetrate their hearts, God, their mind, Lord God, and just re reconcile them back, Father God, to you if they've stepped away from you, oh God. And Father God, I ask you, Lord, that we live in harmony, Father God, as we practice what Jesus taught, Father God, to forgive, to forgive one another, Lord God. So I ask you, Father God, that your message will go out and not come back void, Lord God, that someone's heart will be changed, Father God, when they receive this um, message on today, Lord. In your son Jesus' name, we pray under your authority and power, God. Amen. Amen. So, like I said before, our title lesson is a story of forgiveness. So, we're going to be reading from the NIV, so it might read different from some other, some one else's Bible, but God's truth is God's truth. Why well, could you read uh, the verses first? Yes. Jesus continued There was a man who had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything there, after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will sell out and go back I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your higher servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, kissed him, and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put, on, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they begin to celebrate. Amen. As we read this lesson and um, began to prepare for it, um, my wife made a great, great observation that when this lesson is taught or preached on, it's um, more preached on the the, uh, the perspective of the son, the younger son or the older son, rarely is it taught or preached on the father's, um, from father's point of view. So, as I study um, 
the section, my section is from verses um, 11 through 16. And I studied that section, Holy Spirit gave me um, two words um, and it gave me the point of view from the Father's perspective. So the two words that the Holy Spirit gave me is gracious and love. Gracious love from the Father's um, perspective. Um, gracious of a merciful or compassionate nature, kind, and love, strong affection, desire, or devotion. I got these uh, de definitions from um, my uh, Bible dictionary. I have a dictionary in the back of the Bible, and I got these definitions from the Bible. So, my, uh, I, the way I was led to structured structure my section uh, as structured in two sections so i'm going to cover verses 11 through 14 and then verses 15 through 16 my last section so i'm going to read those uh verses 11 through 14. and i'm reading from the new living translation uh, these uh verses so it reads to illustrate the point further jesus told them this story a man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money in wild living. 14. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. I want to start um, from the expository because um, it just from reading um, those verses, the expository, it uh, it just sums it up um, like this. It says, "How shocking that a son would ask his father for his inheritance." Um, in effect, he was saying, I wish you were dead. Here was a young man who had been fed, clothed, housed by his loving father, yet the young man was not satisfied. And how, it, um, and that's um, us as children of God. God takes care take her take care of our needs but yet it's still um we like oh god it's not enough mm -hmm. i want this i want that right it's like this son that his father he he was living in luxury his father was a wealthy man um as you can um, see from the reading mm -hmm. he had an estate so that means he had plenty of animals he had servants um Later on, it tells you when he came back, he put the best robe and the rings on his finger. That's uh, for, like not royalty. That's that that his father had money. He was living the lap of luxury, but yet and still, he wanted more. He wanted stuff on his own terms. So it's like us and God provide our needs. He provide everything we need, but yet and still, we're like, oh, I want this and want that. That's not wrong to want things, but when we want it. In our own time, in our own way, when it doesn't work like that, God controls our destiny and how things flow. So we always want stuff in our own, in our own terms. That's not how God designed it to be. So it shows how loving, uh, how gracious and loving his father was. He didn't get mad. He didn't get angry. He divided his estate between two sons. So. Let's go to, and that leads us to 1 Corinthians. Um, let's go to 1 Corinthians, um, famous uh, chapter, chapter uh, 13. Um, I'm going to read um, from 4 through 7. So, 1 Corinthians, dubbed the love chapter, um, says this about this loving father. It says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record 
of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoice whenever the truth wins out. Seven, love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. The father was he's patient with his son. Mm -hmm. He was hopeful, as you're going to see in the second section, my wife going to be hopeful that the son was here. He was hopeful. See how God continues to love us shows that his patience is amazing. This father's love from um, our lesson is amazing. Like how our heavenly father's love is amazing. In spite of our repeated failure, failings, pride, and stubbornness, he is always ready to forgive. And his spirit is always ready to instruct. No matter how many times we mess up, God is always here with arms wide open to forgive us and to teach us how to be better. <laughs> we disobey God, rebel against him, but yet it's still like the Israelites, God still keeps us. He still he still guides us when we take the advice from, uh, from him. So this um, father here is the same thing. He was he didn't get angry. He wasn't irritated irritated by the son. Like this is the younger son. First of all, he mm -hmm. when the father split it up, he's not get that get that much. He's not he's not get that much anyway. The older son gets majority of the estate. But it says he split between both sons. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say, oh, he gave him a little bit and gave the other uh, much more to the older son. But he was, he was so patient and gracious. He just gave it to him. Like, okay, here you go. Like, God does the same thing to us. If we want to go our own way, God said, okay, you go your own way. But knowing still, I'm here when you're ready to return. And that's how gracious and loving our Heavenly Father is, just like this Father. Our society confuses love with lust. Mm. True godly love goes against our natural tendency to be selfish. God is not selfish when we're trying to go our own way. Like God, I'm like, oh, um, no, you can't go that mm. way. I'm going to hold you. You can't. I want you to do what I want to do. Yeah, we're supposed to do the will of God, but God is not selfish in the fact that he controls us like robots. He gives us um, a mind to think for ourselves, give us free will. Mm -hmm. The father wasn't selfish in saying, "Oh, I, I, you know, I'm not gonna let you go because I, I want you, uh, I want your presence here." Exactly. No, he wanted the best for his son, so he's like, "You know what? Here you go. Go ahead. You know, I'm gonna give it to you." He wasn't selfish in like, "No, I'm gonna hold on to it. You're not ready yet. I'm, I'm not gonna give it to you." He's not selfish in what he wanted. To make him happy, he wanted his son to be happy because he loves his son. Mm -hmm. Love is um, love is um, selfless action. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that no one should perish but have everlasting life. That is selfless. God was selfless in giving, giving up his son to save us. The father was selfless of giving his son what he asked for so you can be happy. Christ, Jesus Christ gave his life because he loved us, selfless. He was God and man. And therefore, he didn't have to give his life because he could have destroyed everyone <laughs> that was spitting his face, beating him. It is still selfless because God sent him, sent him down for a mission. It wasn't about him. It was about us to reconcile us back to God. Selfless. This father gave up his estate to this disrespectful son. He also gave of his joy, um, his joy of having his son um, presence in his kingdom. God will allow us to go our own way.
if we repent and give our life to God, then we're going to be in his kingdom. Later on, you will see, as my wife's going to tell you, the son came back to the kingdom. But he went his own way. And he showed how loving the father was to welcome him back into the kingdom. And that's what the Holy Spirit gave me for those um, verses. I'm going to move to my second section, last section. Um, it's 15 and 16 of uh, Luke. And it reads like this. He persuaded. Um, he persuaded a local farmer to hire him. And the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods, was, uh, pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. According to Deuteronomy, that's good. Deuteronomy uh, 14. Um, according to the Mosaic Law, the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 14 and 8 that the pig is an unclean animal. It reads, And you may not eat the pig. It has split hooves, but does not chew its cut. So it is ceremonially unclean for you. You may not eat the meat of these animals or even touch their carcasses. This meant if a person is a Jew, they cannot eat or use this um, animal for sacrifices or even touch it, or even being around it. If you were devoted to the commandments that God gave Moses, then, and you were a true Jew, then um, this pig, the pig, you will stay far, far, far away from it. But this young man <laughs> fell to his lowest. A, Jew, a Jewish young man, and he was attending to pigs. And that was against what God told them not mm -hmm. to do. For this young man, for this young Jewish man to stoop to feeding pigs was a great humiliation. Um, this young son had truly sunk to the depths of his self worth. Like <laughs> he went his own way. Didn't listen to his father, like we do. Don't listen to God, and then we get in trouble. And then we have to try to do whatever we can do um, to survive. When we were surviving, God was keeping us, but we chose to go our own way and then mess everything up for ourselves. But as a believer, our self worth is based on the fact that Father loves us and calls us His children. And we are his children now and forevermore. And knowing this truth should encourage us to live more like Jesus. And this leads us into our second section that you see that our self worth is based on the Father's love. And we're going to see that in our second section. Thank you. You may proceed, wife. I'm going to read my verses and then I'll go into. Um, the lesson starting from verse 17 when he came to his senses he said how many of my father's higher servants have food to spare and here I am starving to death I will set out and go back to my father and say to him father I have sinned against heaven and against you I am no longer worthy to be called your son make me like one of your hired servants so he got up and went to his father but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. 
But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe put it, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. And he was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Faith in Christ will lead us to reconcile with others. We should act in faith, seek reconciliation and restoration when necessary. We often live with broken relationships. We face choices just like the father and older brother. We can choose to continue a broken relationship or we can seek reconciliation. Our faith in Christ should lead us to take lead in seeking reconciliation, even if the problem is not our fault. Who is someone you need to reconcile with? Act in faith to seek reconciliation. Take a moment today to pray for those you need to be reconciled um, and ask for God for strength. Most of us can tell a lost um, a lost and found story. No matter what it was that was lost, whether a prized possession or a well-loved pet or even a roaming child, there is great joy that fills heaven when a lost person repents and is found. Sin will take your sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. How ready, our, how ready our Heavenly Father is to reconcile with those who will humbly repent. He knows our hearts. He perceives the truth in, the true intent of our actions and is eager to give us his best. Be reconciled to God and rejoice. The younger son, like many of us who are rebellious and immature, wanted to be free to live as he pleased, and he had to hit rock bottom before he came to his senses. Some people need great sorrow and tragedy to cause them to um, look to the only one who can help them, Jesus. Are you trying to live your life your own way? Stop and look before you hit rock bottom. Humans have the capacity to change. We do not have the capacity to remain in the pig pen. We do not have the we do not have to continue to live as sinners. We can become responsible for our lives. When the son returned, the father's response was priceless. He been he had been watching and waiting for his son every day since he left. So I just want that to kind of sink in that he he gave his attention to that son and was watching and waiting every day. So I'm going to read from the expository um, some sections um, that stuck out to me. The son was so the son was still a long way off when his father spotted him. His longing for his son's return is fully evident in his actions. Imagine if he had not been watching in this manner. And if the son had arrived at his door before he knew he was anywhere around. We cannot help noticing that the focus of attention has now changed from the son to the father. Jesus made the shift on purpose in order to portray his father as a loving God waiting for the return of those he loves so dearly. There are two perspectives about the parables in Luke 15. Some think they teach the restoration of sinning to, uh, of a sinning believer to fellowship with God. Others believe they teach the salvation of one who was lost. We should note the key words here. The father said to his son, the father has said his son had been dead and was now alive, lost and now found. Jesus was speaking to those who were rejecting his message 
and objecting his association with sinners. Such sinners needed more restoration. The primary emphasis there, therefore, seems to be salvation. And, oh, sorry. The sheep, the coin, the sheep, coin, and son were all lost and sought by their owners. Picturing God, the creator. At the same time, we know that God rejoices over every wandering child of his who returns to him as much as he does over those who are redeemed for their sinful conditions. And I'm going to read from a commentary um, from the commentary within the Bible. In the two preceding stories, the seeker actively looked for the coin and the sheep, which could not return by themselves. In this story, the father watched and waited. He was dealing with the human being with a will of his own, but he was ready to greet his son when he returned in the same way. God's love, in the same way, God's love is constant, patient, and welcoming. He will search for us and give us opportunities to respond, but he will not force us to come to him. Like the father in this story, God's wait, God waits patiently for us to come back to our senses and come to him. The father, these are some, um, just to kind of bullet point all of what the father did for the son that wanted his inheritance the son that was selfish and was only was self-centered and thought about itself this is what that same that father did for his son he gave him his position in the family like he previously had full privileges he gave him the best robe um brought out a ring and sandals for his feet the fatted calf was reserved for a banquet or celebration. The son's return was enough for the father to celebrate. Mm. A clear indication that the father was receiving his son, receiving him back as his son. And one more excerpt. Everything the younger son had hoped to find in a far country, he discovered back home. Mm. Clothes, jewelry, friends, joyful celebration, love, and assurance for the future. Yeah. The father did not ask him to earn his forgiveness mm. because no amount of good works can save us from our sin. Yeah. This father portrays our heavenly father in his love, kindness, grace, and mercy. If any one of us needs to be reconciled to him, he will be certain that he, we can be certain that he is waiting and watching and will never turn away someone coming to him. Amen. For this young man, the return was just the beginning. From then on, his relationship with his father would no doubt be full of blessings. So it is for every person who comes to our father. Amen. The son learned the meaning of misery when he left home and discovered the meaning of mercy when he came back home. The father, the father could have rejected his son instead. Instead, he made the choice to reconcile with him. Yeah. We cannot wait for the person to come to us. We must take the first step or we may never experience restoration. The sheep was lost, but it fool, but the, I'm sorry, the sheep was lost because it foolish, because it foolishly wandered away. The coin was lost through no fault of his own. And the son left out of selfishness. God's great love reaches out and finds sinners, no matter why or how they got lost. So if you can tell, um, my section that the Holy Spirit gave me to focus on was reconciliation. And... In, in in our life, we, with whether it's family, in our relationships with people, it is hard in our human nature yeah. to reconcile, especially when we've been wronged. Right. Um, but God shows us that 
we do not deserve to be reconciled to him. We do not deserve for him to be waiting and watching yeah. for us to come to him. And yet, and still, no matter how low we get, because this man got low yeah. in his life due to his own choices, right. his father welcomed him, yeah. like ran to him with arms open, yeah. extended nothing but grace to his son. Yes. And that in turn is how we should be to those who we need to be reconciled back to. Yeah. As Christians, we're to be like Christ and we're to be the the difference. We are set apart for a reason. Right. And true enough that reconciliation is something that we all struggle with and we all um, have a hard time with because we feel someone owes us something in mm -hmm. order to be reconciled. Yeah. When we owe God everything, he owes us nothing. Yeah. And yet, he re he's there waiting for us. Yeah. So I want us to take some time today to really, really, truly think about who it is, whether it's a family member, a friend, a coworker, even yourself, reconciling with yourself and just being forgiving of yourself to take a deep dive in that because we do know that the father said that God talks about us not forgiving others. How can we ask for his forgiveness? Yeah. He's not, he wants us to have that heart and everything is in our heart. We can say we forgive someone, mm -hmm. but if it's not in our heart, it shows up in our actions. Mm -hmm. So I want us to take some time today to look at, into reconciliation and restoration within our families, within our friendships, within whatever relationship is worth reconciling. Reconcile it back to God and he will guide you and give you the strength you need to even be able to approach the person or people. So I pray that we all have a blessed Sunday. I pray that we all reconcile and we be restored back to our families, our friends, and most and most importantly, back to God. Because love is patient and love is kind. Yes. Remember that next time you get mad or irritated at someone, that love is patient. It's kind of action. God showed action when he sent his son to die for our sins. Yes. Remember, love is patient and love is kind. Peace. Peace.